Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us and welcome to this session of Flickering Reality, Exploring Ideas in Film and Television, with this session entitled May the Force Be With Us. Um, I'm James B. Barbieri, uh, Associate Program Director of the Safari Center, and I'll be your host for today. Uh, today with me, we also have Eleanor Pete, Program Director of the Pari Center, and Maureen Doolan, Co-Founder of the Pari Center, uh, and they will assist me and you during this call. Uh, now, before we begin, I'd just like to uh, remind everyone of a couple of Zoom rules uh, for this session. Uh, first of all, during the presentation, we will ask participants to turn off their microphone just to ensure better quality audio. For this reason, if we hear any background noise that might be a disturbance, we may mute you. Um, during the, uh, this will be quite a uh, interactive uh, session. Uh, so when it comes to the interactive parts, if you want to contribute to the discussion or ask a question, you can either use the raise your hand function on Zoom or physically raise your hand. And if I spot you, you can turn on your microphone. Um, otherwise, you can just write your question in the chat section of the Zoom call. Uh, the chat section will be open throughout the session, uh, so please do use it as it's a great way to share your thoughts on the presentation with other participants. Um, we also invite everyone to turn on their video camera, as we believe that seeing everyone's faces and reactions creates a nice, creates a nice um, educational environment. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable turning your camera on, you're free to just keep it off. Um, and finally, the, this session is recorded for archival purposes, but the recording will also be available to you all. Uh, the recording will become public at some point next week and will be published on our YouTube channel. Um, and I suggest you all look at our YouTube channel as we have all the recordings of past Flickr and reality events and all of our free call. So if you subscribe there, you will see all of our updates on recordings. Um, now, enough about the rules. Uh, we can start with the session. Uh, today, we welcome Jean-Francois Benzina, who's a clinical psychologist in private practice in Quebec, but he's also an author and a musician. Jean-Francois was the president of the Jungian Society of Quebec for seven years and has uh, recently created the Cercle Jung de Tekenyon Day at the Hilbert Hotel, a psycho-philo-poetic experience exploring the multiverse. Today, Jean-Francois will explore the Star Wars universe with his talk, May the Force Be With Us. And with that, I'll pass it over to you, Jean-Francois. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, James, and thank you so much, Paris Center, for being here and inviting me today. It's a very special day uh, today. It's the Pi Day. We didn't plan to do it on the Pi Day, but we are on a Pi Day. On the Pi Day is the day where uh, Stephen Hawking passed away and the day where uh, Albert Einstein um, born. Uh, today, I, I, I propose you that it will be the Star Peace Pi Day. So not the Star Wars, the Star Peace. <laughs> Friday. So what I would like to what I would love to do with you today is to create a bubble or a kind of a space where we will explore the the archetypal dynamic of Star Wars. So we will dig into the energy of the archetype of the Star Wars in an interactive way. But we talk a lot about the archetype as um, some things fixed sometimes, but archetypes are dynamics. So we'll try to explore the dynamics of it into the interaction of, uh, of our meeting today. Um, how I work with movie, I, I use movie in my clinical practice and I wrote a book about movie. And um, how I use the movie, I see movie as the great dreams of the collective encounter, uh, the, the collective unconscious. So we can dig into the, the movie to, to extract some listen or some tools or some ideas uh, helping us uh, being more uh, in relation with life. My, my, my method, or the way I work with a movie, it's a, a translating mo model. It's not uh, interpretation, it's translating. The main idea I have is imagine that uh, the movie has a, its own language. And so we try to translate this language into our own language. The language I, is very important uh, in Star Wars, uh, in, in a lot of movies. Um, think about C-3PO. 
C-3PO is the main character who translate the language, who transmit the story. So uh, we will try to explore and translate this archi archetypal di dynamics into our own life. So we will enter an interactive process. So if you have ideas, if you have something popping up, don't hesitate to write it on the discussion board or uh, raise your hand if an ID uh, sees you and you want to share it with, with us. Okay, let's begin. I will share my screen with your screen. So we'll work with technology and powers and technologies. Uh, you know, where you, you can turn into the bad side of the technology or the good side. I hope it will work well. Uh, so I will share my screen with you. Okay. So there it is. Okay. Do you uh, are you able to see the the image now? Yeah, we can see. Okay, so that will that will be the plan of our play or the, our exploration today. We will explore the three dimension or the three level of the force, because the force is at the core of Star Wars. So we will explore what is the force, but a tree and tree level, and so that will help us to divide the the the, the forty two years of Star Wars and tree level. So the first level, we will explore the first trilogy. And the first trilogy, uh, the first trilogy, one, two, three, that was um, um, published in, in 1999, because the, we, we, had, we received the episode four first. But so we'll begin with the episode one, two, three, for exploring, may the force be with me. So it's the process of Anakin Skywalker trying to, trying to mastering force but is a trap he is trapped by palpatine and so he, he, he began to to it's turned into a machine so he wanted to have more force but it was the force only for himself and that's how we can divide or we can explore the dynamic of the archetype is, is it only for your ego is it only for yourself or if for, if the energy of the archetype is for the outside for the world so, so first level, we explore the three first movie, uh, and then we'll dig into may the force be with me. What's the problem with it? It can be good, but what's the problem with the force only with me? The, the second level, the episode four, five, and six, we will explore may the force be with you. So it's the, the, the phrase that was uh, so popular. And that phrase is copyrighted. And you know, George Lucas has a copyright on that phrase. <laughs> so uh, this is the heroic energy uh, it was popularized by Joseph Campbell. So we will not too much dig into Joseph Campbell because everyone know, knows it, but we will explore how the, when the force is from, from the inside to the outside, to heal the other, to heal the father figure, uh, we will see. And the third level, episode uh, seven, eight, nine, it will be exploring may the force be with us in the space between us and we will explore the archetype of the Yeros Gamos. Yeros Gamos, for keeping simple, is the other name of the individuation process. It's how you reconcile the opposite inside of you. All the opposite inside of you. And this is very this is in Star Wars it's very well represented by the couple of Kylo and Ray. So we will explore those characters. So let's let's dig into the, the the adventure. But first, let's explore the title. If we want to begin the question, what this title <laughs> what this title evoke for you? What this title uh, how this title resonate inside of you? So what you see in this title? free speech everyone can speak so where do you see in this title star wars if you want to make a contribution just uh unmute yourself yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so what this title bring in your consciousness well, I, I see something about direction and, and flow those those s's are very particular they're about they're heading somewhere and mm. then at the end it heads out somewhere doesn't it 
Yeah. Oh yeah. So are you oriented? Uh, are, are you oriented? The, the direction. The idea of direction. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Good. 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 For me, it connotes the entire galaxy is at war with each other. With oh, itself. so oh, so it's it's uh, evoked the idea of a, a galaxy in war. Yes. Okay. That's why I keep it the, the, the subtitle, the Skywalker Saga, because we are in the Skywalker family galaxy of constellation. So nice. But they are in war. There's a war in that galaxy. Okay. Thank you. So there's a war in the galaxy. Okay. Other yeah. ideas? Other ideas? Yeah, me too. I mean, when I think about Star Wars uh, and also the title card and um, a long time ago in a galaxy far far away mm. something that is sort of detached from us something mm. that's way above us that mm -hmm. has, has nothing to do with us but still something is going on up there great great james great james so you project something very far far far, far in a galaxy far 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 away and george lucas play with space like that it's very far but it's very near in time he play with George Lucas called it the the old the 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 old future. This idea of old future, something is old but in the future. So he, he created uh, the use that new. See, when you are in the starship of the Star Wars, there is old. You know, like the Millennium Falcon is old, but it's also in the future. So this kind of distancing in space, distancing of time is very important. So thank you, James. Good. What are the ideas? What's the word stars for you? What's the meaning of the word stars for you? Uh, for me, star is, uh, 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 it's an ambiguous word. <clears throat> a Hollywood star, <laughs> a, a neutron star, a, uh, an exploding star, um, twinkle, twinkle, little star, lots of uh, great. associations. Great, 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 great. So this idea of different version about stars. I like the, um, the relation between Hollywood stars and the stars because uh, this, this movie created a lot of stars, uh, Harrison Ford, and, uh, and it created a lot of problem with the star system. I don't know if you have seen the movie uh, about uh, Darth Vader. There's a documentary about Darth Vader. So Darth Vader, we didn't use his own voice. So it's like a, it was a, a puppet into that. So it was a, a dark star <laughs> in the sense of thing. So this idea of a stars, I know it would. Nice, good. Well, I have also another idea comes to my mind. Uh, yeah. You see, it's exactly like these dots you have on the screen. For me, stars means when I was a kid and I was wishing upon a star looking at the sky you know in during the night and wow. it's something that is very very far you you have no idea what it is but it's mysterious it's something just flickering there and you you just think that something you would like to have or you like to go there or you like to know it's mm -hmm. just something magic or, or mysterious and i'm not sure why people are um uh, making wishes when uh, there is a falling star, but it's interesting that they have this idea that if something happens somewhere very far, far away in the sky, mm. they would like to be there or they, it's interesting, you know? Good, good. If you give me the permission, I take two ideas, what you said. Something I want, star something I want, and some, where, somewhere I want to go, the movement to go. And at the core of what you said is the, near, the energy of wishes, the energy of the desire. So if you give me the permission, I will propose you one way to see the stars, because in French, the word desire came from de sidus, de privation word, sidus, star. So at the core of the Star Wars universe, there's this, this idea of a de desire energy. Is this desire energy in war? Is this desire energy is free? So the energy of the star can be at some point be seen as the energy of a wish, what I wish, what I want, and what the galaxy offered to me. 
as the core of the heroic process. Luke Skywalker, I want to, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be uh, something. I want to be not not Luke Skywalker. Maybe we'll, other character have more of that. But I want to be a, fi, a a star pilot. So is that desire is I want to be a star pilot. And then the chaos came. He, he encountered droids, um, different kind of uh, necessary chances, and then he became a Jedi. So his first desire was reoriented in another way. Uh, Darth Vader, and we will go into this image because the story of Darth Vader, so we'll dig more into the first trilogy now, if you want. Darth Vader, Anakin, what he wanted, okay. Anakin, he loved the girl until he wanted the power. So this is the full course of the first trilogy. Anakin fall in love with a woman, and then he discovered the power, the energy of love, and then he wanted more power. So let's dig into the first image, the first encounter between Anakin and Padme. Anakin uh, encounter Padme. Like Michael Conforti said, in the beginning of our relation in the beginning of our encounter, sometimes there's symbolic aspect that is interesting to look in our own life, but in the movie too. This is the first encounter between Akin and Padme. Let's open a discussion space. What you see in this first meeting between two energy or two character, what you see in that? I was thinking a lot of innocence. Yeah. But both sides? Innocence and both sides? Uh, a little more so with the boy. <laughs> uh, more innocence than the boy. OK. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. Someone want to talk? Yeah. Um, Paul, no, you just want to say, oh, so the innocence yeah. energy. Yeah. OK, great, great, great. Uh, so innocence. <laughs> When you talk about innocence, the, the <clears throat> if you look at the scene, it's amazing. I, I thought exactly the same thing. Uh, it's obvious that the boy, if we are comparing the visual, the boy seems more innocent. I don't know why. Uh, nice. yeah. Some of it has to do with his appearing to be younger. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, uh, he looks naive. Hmm. She does not. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So innocence, naivety. So two propriety of the energy you see in that scene. So we explore the propriety of the image now. So innocence, naivety. Are those ideas arise in this image? In the in the Grail uh, stories, uh, Parsifal is similarly innocent yeah the innocence of I, th I think that's an important clue here yeah, yeah yeah great so the true innocent energy of a young boy or a young uh any, any yeah yeah so so we are now exploring some more universal ideas now so so uh, innocence naivety and we connect that with an image first of all and we connect that with this image because what is very interesting and important to do is to try to dig into the archetypal fundamental energy and then this energy deploy into image. But before deploying into image, there's somewhere else. Others are energy or others ideas you see in this image? She, nice. look, she looks yeah. earnest. She looks earnest and she looks like she's trying to get a message across to him. It's exactly what Anakin said. You are an angel. <laughs> Anakin said to Padme, you are an angel. Can you translate to me the word earnest? Sorry for my English. I don't know exactly uh, no, what it's it a, means. Earnest means she is uh, energized, right? Good. She's Good. trying to do something. Good. So there's an energy. You see energy that's bringing into. What you don't see exactly on this image is uh, it, why, what are the states of birth? boats. The state of Anakin is a state of slave. 
is a slave of uh, a man um, at that point is a slave and she is a, a, a queen in in devenir so the energy of the queen and the energy of the the slave too you you have this in into that but this kind of energy she brings something into the life of uh, of anakin right because it's exactly what he said he said you are like an angel so you bring something good good so it's he brings up yeah, go yeah it's like she's already has a purpose that she's aware of whereas mm. he is like um he's yet to have a story um appear in his life he's, he's like the beginning of a book uh, <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, already yeah, part way yeah. through it yeah so yeah. she has this she knows about things he's a total innocent so he's yet to become something wow so nice so in a sense meet wisdom or something uh, a story or something bring into life so well, yeah we are beginning today nice he, he may also be a little fearful his hands are crossed really okay clapping. nice his fear, legs are, fear his energy legs are crossed he's not as open obviously what is fear he's, energy what is the polarity <clears throat> of fear the unknown um, is fear of the unknown absolutely yeah 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 so fear of the unknown or curious of the unknown so this energy will deploy a jedi will be open to the unknown. a sit will be try to control the unknown. fear is more the the sit energy because there's two teams in that game and you know the sit and the jedi <laughs> They are they are both playing the same game, but not on the same level of energy. But yeah, you can begin to see fear, or you can you you know that you will be yeah to do with the fear of loss and the fear of loss and the fear of transformation that will lead to the path to the dark side. Is it the fear energy that is driving you, or is it the desire energy or the curiosity energy that drives you? So that's very interesting. You can see that in the, yeah in the beginning. Yeah. Other ideas you see in that scene. Let's turn into another encounter. This encounter with two guys. So you have this innocent guy um, who meet. That was the first time, one of the first time we see uh, pa Chancellor Palpatine. Um, maybe that scene it's not uh, very clear, but what what what's in the space of the the the, the encounter of the, these two characters? For those who have seen the movie, what will happen to these two characters in, in, in Star Wars universe? I mean, for those uh, for those who haven't seen the film, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you know you've got Anakin, which is you know starting off as a young Jedi, clean slate. He has grown up, sure, but still holds that innocence. And then you've got uh, Chancellor Palpatine at this point, who basically knows what's going on. He holds control about everything and sees the potential to corrupt Anakin. Who's just <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, James. So you see that Palpatine see also a potential into, like uh, and may star a potential into the other. It's a nice, good, 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 good. Hmm. Just for remind you uh, about Palpatine. Palpatine, uh, it was the character that returned into the episode 9. It was at the core of the episode 9. We will see it later. But let's explore what is this energy of Palpatine. So the, um, the young Jedi or the young Anakin who fall in love and then he is afraid of losing love. He made Palpatine and Palpatine said, oh, there's no problem uh, with the dark side of the force. He's like a life coach, you know, this kind of life coach who bring into your life. There's no problem with this technique. You will be in control of your life. And so he bring something that hmm, you can do everything you want. You can control everything you want, but <laughs> you have to be my slave. <laughs> but if you look deeper into this archetype or this energy of Palpatine, what for you? 
And let's try to translate this energy in your own life. In your own life, what is the energy of Palpatine? Wow. He seems to me like an insurance seller. He yeah. uh, actually feeds himself with uh, fear. Fear and of people. Why? The fear of people. Fear yeah. of loss. The fear you of loss? Your house, you lose uh, your life, you lose something. Okay. So he insures you. So it's, you see it as an insurance uh, manager? He sells insurance to uh, people? Yeah. Well, actually, no. He sells just hope. Hope ah, that you... Oh. <laughs> that you'll, uh, he doesn't sell solutions. And the thing is that what he uses, he uses the fear, mm. the fear of other people and transforms it into its own power. Okay, good. How is the business of fear in our planet now? It's Have you not... deal with the energy of fear in our planet now? How is the, if you want to make a, Money with fear, do you think it's a good time to do money with fear now? <laughs> Sorry for my laugh. I don't want to laugh like Palpatine, but then <laughs> Palpatine mm. arrives in our screen in December 2019. So that's fun. How the movie enter in our life. So that's energy is very interesting, the fear energy. But let's try to explore. What is this kind of fear energy? in our own life. So you meet it in the insurance or maybe sometime in uh, people that want to sell you solution, but. Well, if, <clears throat> when you put the question in terms of, uh, do I see uh, Palpatine or an analogous person or energy in my own life? I don't think I want to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the dark side, the, 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 you know, the, the constant focus of the movies on the dark side as opposed to the opposite, which doesn't have a name. Mm, mm. The dark side, we are made aware of and, and it, we are kept, it, it, it is constant. Mm. But, yeah words uh, that go on between the characters to my, and I haven't seen any of the three sequel movies, so I'm very ignorant. No, but, you're very creative now, very creative now. Yeah. I, I, do not, yeah. I do not hear uh, words that characterize the opposite energy, the bright side, the light side, or what have you. Hmm. Um, it's just, something that I notice uh, and it doesn't have to be spoken. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. highlighted, mm -hmm. but um, the, 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 the dark side, the fear, the threat, the terror is what energizes the movie makers and the people who want to sell tickets to theater goers. Mm -hmm. They were going to encounter, and we went through this in the previous Perry uh, uh, session on horror movies. Um, and the point that I'm trying to make is simply uh, the fear grips us because fear is something more closer to our, our consciousness than uh, light. Enjoy, Good. or it is Good. the mind. Yeah. I should yeah. speak yeah. for yeah. myself. Yeah. So the, the main question, or one of the main questions, it's very nice that you have the, you haven't seen the movie because you bring new energy into our discussion. Uh, is is he also the trickster? Because not, we're pretty... not necessarily the trickster. No. I will talk. No. Maybe Chris, we can explore. There's other figure of trickster in Star Wars. This is for yeah. me. That's not necessarily a trickster yeah. figure. But when we I, I, yeah, go go. go. No. Do we project our own shadow on him? Yes. So we can project on him the trickster. We can project anything. He's free. Uh, you can project anything into that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. When well, we, uh, 
Uh, just a finish. I, I have a talk with Michael Conforti about that, and uh, Michael Conforti and and the, the group where we talk about the pure evil energy that don't have any name or any. The, the absolute, the the ener the dark energy of absolute. So it has nothing. Mm -hmm. But it took the color of our own projection. It took the color of our own projection. Yeah. So the absolute of evil, or the absolute of the darkness, or the absolute of anything. So the energy that is not in relation. Because what is very important in Star Wars is, are you in relation? Do you have a relation? Do you have a story? Do you have something in motion? So this energy is cutting energy, absolute energy, no relation. Only relation that I use you like a virus. Mm -hmm. So it's the energy of the virus, the energy of I take, I take, I take, I take, or I, I, I copy and I take. But it, it's also a projection of our own fear. So Palpatine is the dark figure, the absolute dark figure, because he receives all the projection of our own energy. And Anakin will be confronted with that energy when he is fear of losing Padme. And then he will project into Padme the fear of losing her, and he will project on Obi Wan Kenobi the guy that that want uh, to control, and so it, it will project project everything wrong. So now, Anakin is in a state of the virus of the absolute Palpatine. You know, he projects fear everywhere. He projects fear everywhere because he's not in relation with his fear of losing her. So if you're not in relation with your fear, you project your fear everywhere. You want more control in your life, and you want more control in the galaxy. And when you want more control, you are controlled by the, 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 the fear of losing control. So at that, this is the pivotal point where Anakin became Darth Vader with the virus of the Palpatine. Uh, when you mentioned virus, well, so it's, a, it's not word. It's a word. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I think parasite and the relationship between a parasite and its host, the way a virus, the way the COVID virus, you know, interacts with us exactly. human beings. Exactly. exactly. Uh, it's a it's just an idea. I, I don't know where to go with this, but the idea of a parasite, something that is a monkey on my back, something that holds me down, something that takes away my freedom somehow. I, I don't know where to go with that. So par parasite energy, it's a special kind of interaction because now we are digging into the relation, not only Palpatine, but our relation to this energy. And it can take the form of a parasite. Palpatine can, can let us, being a parasite, parasite or, or um, uh, a vampire to the other. So it's not only Palpatine. It's when it's inside of you, you became a parasite or you became, you work like or you are conscious by the energy of this. What a parasite, a virus is seeking a host so that it can reproduce itself. It cannot reproduce itself on its own. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it needs an animal, a human. I don't know that this is true of all parasitic organisms. Uh, but the idea, if I can get you to duplicate me, mm -hmm. the fear, the projection of fear by, in other words, I'm going to make you afraid. You will die if you don't cooperate with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And the person who says, oh, yeah, sign me up, I'm in, is obligated to duplicate the threat, the projection of fear. Yeah. You know, Darth Vader walks around with this dark costume yeah, and a, yeah. his mask, and the idea is intimidation. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So, so that leads us to talk about the force. If you give me permission, Paul, to talk about the force, the force and the space between us, because parasite is a kind of a, is a kind of a color of a force of relation. There's not only parasite. There's also creative energy in the space between us. We can be more than two of us. We can be more creative in the space between us. So let's explore what is the force. There's a lot of ideas about the force, but two main ideas about the force is like the force in nature. It can express like the Palpatine is a more electric force, you know, and the more um, like a, a spider or so he give a, a kind of energy that's more electric, electromagnetic force. Uh, the other Jedi like uh, Yoda, Yoda we will talk about about Yoda, Yoda is a very beautiful figure. Yoda play with the gravity, the gravity and the anti-gravity. So anti-gravity is very nice force is let go let go thing let go uh, so i don't want the, not only the force with me but uh, the expression force and so with anti-gravity yoda is able to fly an x wing <laughs> with only is the force so the force is like magnetism is like uh, gravity anti-gravity and so the jedi will play with this different side of the force but what is also interesting to look at the force is a more in the dark side of the force. I don't know if you remember an episode one when Lucas introduced the idea of the midi chloridian. I see James. <laughs> James, what was your reaction, James, when you asked talking about the midi chloridian? Well, I mean, Sunday so Star Wars four, five, six it sort of seemed that the force was something that anyone could pick up. It was something that, well, it, you know, it was the energy that surrounds us and the Jedis were, and well, the Siths in a way, were the ones that were sensitive to the force and therefore could manipulate it. And that's why they could levitate and all, all those powers that they have. And with the introduction of those mitochondrion cells, it seemed that not everyone could do it. Oh, okay. it could be so only the ones okay. that basically grew with it. Like I think they put in episode one that Anakin sort of was born when there were loads of these cells going around, and that's why he was so powerful. But the beauty of the original Star Wars I found was that anyone could be a Jedi. Good. Thank you very very much, Jim. I know that you had this so, because this also the energy of the democracy and the energy of the dictatorship that is hidden into this kind of ideas. And it's also the idea of a biodiversity and the idea of there's race that are more powerful than other. So this, James, is in the dark side of the midi Chloridian ideas. But if we admit that everyone has this kind of mitochondria, because uh, uh, the idea behind that for Joe Lucas is the mitochondria. You know, the mitochondria and the cells, everyone has mitochondria. Let's look at what George Lucas said about this aspect of the, of the force. Can you see, can you read my screen? Can you read it, uh, James? Because my English is not... Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. So it, uh, it reads, Mitochondrions are a loose depiction of mitochondria, which are the necessary components for cells to divide. They probably have something which will come out someday to do with the beginnings of life and how one cell decided to come two cells with a little help from this other little creature who came in, without whom life couldn't exist. And it's really a way of saying we have hundreds of little creatures who live on us. And without them, we would all die. There wouldn't be any life. They are necessary to us. We're necessary for them. Using them in the metaphor, saying society is the same way, says we all must get along with each other. The planet is the same way. We must treat the other creatures on the planet with respect. Otherwise, the planet will die. 
So what these words of George Lucas bring into the energy of the force for you? Reconciliation. What, sorry, who want to talk? Sorry, Vajan. Rec Vajan, mm. yeah, go. Let's go. Reconciliation. Recon reconciliation. The, yeah. the energy of reconciliation. Yeah. Good. Good night. So, in, so reconciliation with with what? With both sides of our the dark side and the light side. <laughs> Great. So reconciliation with the dark side and the bright side. Mm. When when I hear, yeah, let's go, pa. When I hear the word reconciliation, to me it is a motion of two two towards each other. And it is difficult if, if the two persons or the two forces have the same polarity, plus, plus they can't meet, plus and minus can draw together, plus and plus are repelled minus and minus are repelled okay. and the idea in the mitochondria the history of life on earth about how bacteria of one type ended up incorporating bacteria who were their enemy yeah, 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 yeah. in order to survive the next so, the next crisis yeah, yeah. is completely yeah. alien yeah. to so the way it, that we yeah. humans think. I yeah. cannot possibly allow the enemy to come into my house and take up residence with me. Okay. That would be suicide. Um, okay. So, so you raise the, the, the words enemy. How you divide the world into enemy and friends? How you do that process of cellular division of the team of the world? How you divide the world? So because we are dividing the world every time. Now I'm dividing the world. I see that. How you divide the world? And how you reconciliate the world? I dream of one day the Zoom of the, the bubble of Zoom will be round. So I, I dream of that one day. That <laughs> I see square. I see people in square. But we are all part of something uh, bigger than us. So what was the most ridiculous ideas of George Lucas? When you dig into more to that, we can explore that can be a nice idea being that. The reconciliation of all the form of life in our own life and in the life surrounded. We saw that. And that is one of the most beautiful ideas of Star Wars. Peace Wars, uh, 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 not Star Wars, Star Peace. Star Peace is being in contact with the biodiversity of all your desires. You have different kinds of desires. We have very strong desire, very bizarre desire. We are unique in a way to desire. So there's a biodiversity unique to us, to, to our desire. But who will decide this desire is good, this desire is bad? This desire bring you into the good team. This desire bring you into the bad team. How you divide the cells of your world? So at the end of the episode three, we have this question that was resonating in all the galaxy. And that was in the episode four, a new hope that we had another ideas. May the force be with you. So this is all the heroic process. So the force is not in, only for me, like Palpatine or Anakin. Or that. The force is also in you. So the way I see you, do I see the force in you? Or do I see the dark side in you? Do I see my fear in you? So this is all about the relational process. And at that point, uh, um, uh, Carrie Fisher, uh, give a, a very nice definition of the Star Wars universe. It's all about family. Star Wars is all about family. How you create a family and how you divide family. 
how you reunite your team and how you divide your team. And you see that in a very different level of the, of the game of life. How you divide, how you conciliate. And so there's Luke Skywalker with, um, with um, Princess Leia, they're, they're twins, because at the end of the episode three, they, they, they are born. So they're, they're tw tw twins, um, uh, symbolic twins. And then Anakin, we say, I, dare, I search for my father. So I want to, to have a, a, more, a better relation with my father. So who is my father? So is my father in the bad team or my father in the good team? And we do it that in our own life. My father is in the good team, my, my father. My... So Star Wars is all about family. And what's interesting about this energy is now uh, Luke will not meet Palpatine. Luke, he will meet that guy. Do you remember that guy? Yoda. What is the Yoda energy in our own life? In your own life, what is this energy of Yoda? Actually, there was someone mentioned before mentioned Yoda as uh, Yoda being the trickster, mm. um, which mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't know if uh, that this person wants to expand that concept a little bit more, but I thought it was very interesting. Trickster energy, he have. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Who want to talk about the trickster in FW with that? I, I, I know, Polly, I, I, I will be trickster a little bit with you, Polly, if you mean. So I would like to hear other people it's, if you want. So if I someone else. It was can... Paul that um, mentioned. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's break the rule. Let's go, Paul. <laughs> What's the energy of the trickster you see in, in Yoda? Go ahead, Paul. The trickster? Yes. In my life, if I say my experience of something like trickster force, I really can't. I look at no. Yoda. Okay. Okay. And I see Yoda as this cute, playful little fellow. Okay. So the energy of play, playful, the energy of play. Because trickster is a name. You know, and when, if you want to dig into the archetype level, we have to search for property, universal property. The playful energy of Yoda is at the core of the trickster archetype, but before being an image, is is as a special energy, the energy of play. And Yoda, he plays on a lot of level because when Luke searched for a Jedi master, I want a Jedi master, so he was playing with these ideas with Luke. Ah, you're searching for a Jedi master. Oh, nice, nice. So he was playing with these ideas with him. So that's playful is the energy of Yoda. It's a part of the energy of the Yoda. Others aspect of the energy of Yoda, the language, why he's speaking reverse? What's the meaning of that? I just, uh, I'm curious about the, yeah. uh, the, the idea of the trickster. Um, mm -hmm. In my understanding, the trickster is the figure that uh, generates conflict between the light and the dark. Okay. And so the, the play actually is the play between the light and the dark. And I mean, Yoda actually sends Luke into his dark place. Yeah. Um, you know, so nice. Yoda is not a, I mean, I don't know, I come from Italy. So those of, the, those of you who speak Italian know the expression, mm -hmm. you know, non è tanto biondo. So it's not exactly connected with his own desire. So it's still in a floating space. And, and uh, Yoda will play with that. What is your real desire? Because that, that's, a, that's a role of a good teacher or a good trickster. It's to let you be in contact with your real desire. Remember the Star Wars, Star Wars, the war of desire. What is your real desire? 
What is your most intimate desire? Yoda help bring this energy into the life of, uh, of, uh, of Luke. And what's interesting, it's uh, he play with time. He play with time because he's an old man, 800 years, and he look like an eight years boy too. So this energy of the, the young and the old, this is very interesting. In the mythology, we had another image of that. I don't know if you know that figure. Who know who is this figure is? And Christopher? Yeah, Christopher. Yeah. yeah, Chris, Chris, Chris. Can you talk about this thing? Do you want to? Just because I share a name, I know nothing more. He was the bearer, oh, no. bearer of Christ. I, I, I don't know the myth. Does anyone else? I just know that he was the one who yes. carried um, Christ across the river. He was the... Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, in a, in a sense, I mean, is kind of um, interesting, the, the figure of the, the, the image of the river that has to be crossed. Absolutely. Um, because uh, in the, well, at, at least in Buddhism, the river is very much the, the spiritual path that you undertake. And so uh, St. Christopher is actually the, um, in a way, he's like the, the, old man on the, the old man in the boat on the sticks. He's the, the, the conveyor of souls. <laughs> Great, yeah. So he helped cross a new, a new world. He entered a new world. Others idea about the energy of Yoda. Let's return to the energy of Yoda because this is an amplif amplification in our culture. But what's the other thing we can say about Yoda? Jung, Jung says some very important things about the child and the child archetype, doesn't he? And about how, you know, it's our connection with our past. It's our connection with nature. It's the connection with the future. Um, and it's, it's also bridging the the opposites of gender because you know the child comes out of male and female it's uh, the, the and the whole theme of these great people like moses and jesus and oedipus having very very vulnerable baby child moments which they survive they're they're a, virtually abandoned okay christ virtually abandoned but he was with his parents in that stable but others they were very much abandoned they survive against all odds there's something about surviving against all odds that jung connects with um the fact that we are of nature and yet we are not succumbing to nature and there's something more to grow from something like that thank you chris yeah because it's too fast, but I will make relations with Baby Yoda to, uh, at the end uh, of our take. Okay. The energy of the child. But the child that is in contact with the wisdom. Um, related to the energy of the, um, of the desire, the energy of the Eros Gamos. What Jung said is um, an unconscious Eros always expresses itself as will to power. When you are a child, you discover eros, but you don't express it as a will to power. Or you express it as a will to play. You express it as a will to discover universe. You you express it in a in a more creative way. But during the passing of time, eros, like Anakin Skywalker, expresses expresses in a more power. You want more power. But the energy of the child, the energy of the eros, the energy of the desire, uh, at first sight, it's it's playful. But it became unconscious, very brain conscious. So let's retrieve. So Anakin, he loved the girl he want, until he wanted the power. But there's also the process of uh, Kylo Ren, who we'll see later. Kylo wanted the power. That was the first time he wanted the power until he loved the girl. And so there was an inversion of this energy of love. Does it have to do with vulnerability? Exactly, exactly. So let's look at the moment where Anakin is free, is free and he enter in contact with his own vulnerability. Let's look at it. Do you see? There's a bug on my computer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
is my fault. But you'll die. Nothing can stop that now. Just for once, let me look on you with my own eyes. Sorry for the people that don't have seen the movie. Uh, I took this clip on the YouTube channel, and uh, when he removed the mask, there's a joke. So uh, I had to stop there. Uh, <laughs> but James, you remember when you see the face of Darth Vader? Um, yes, I do remember it vaguely. So he's um, he's basically like a small pet compared to the vastness of his mask, and he exactly. looks quite. Exactly. Innocent in that moment. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Well, literally mask off. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he has full access to his vulnerability. And this is the idea of I see you. I want to see you because this is very important in Star Wars. The way I see you, I see the good in you. I created in some point. My relation to you, I see good behind the mask. I see something in you. So that became a new, it's not a virus, but it's the virus of love. I saw the beauty in you, I saw the life in you. And so removing the mask, they can be in relation, and they, be, they can be in relation that we are part of the same family. So we are part of the same story. We are part of the same, the same group. Or, so this is very important at the, um, in the Star Wars trilogy, when uh, uh, Luke free his father. And this ent the, the intrication or the entanglement of the young and the father, it has it, it raised the, the idea of the redemption motif. And the redemption motif is very important in Star Wars. So these ideas of uh, the redemption of the, our ancestors how we are dealing with our ancestors. And uh, so this idea is uh, being vulnerable and uh, being humble, we are part of a bigger story than, than our own ego. So may the force be with you. So the force is with you and then you can access your vulnerability. So this is a very nice play with the force and vulnerability in Star Wars. I see that the time pass, <laughs> time pass very far, very fast. Uh, is there someone who want to say something about the second level of the, the, the force, may the force be with you and this, uh, this trilogy? Is there someone who want to add something at this level of our exploration? I, I didn't talk about the intrication of uh, Han Solo with Princess Leia. But uh, it, it has a nice, nice uh, path too. Solo is a very eager man who fell in love with Leia. He, uh, and he, uh, he became a, a block of glass. <laughs> he was trapped into a glass uh, uh, ice. And then the Princess Leia will free him from ice. And then he became open to love with Princess Leia. So the process of Han Solo is also interesting. He made the, the energy of the Princess Leia that he will free, he will uh, let being free. And um, when Han Solo be became trapped into the block of ice, it's in the city of the cloud. I don't even remember the city of the cloud. And I see it as a very interesting metaphor for our society. Are we becoming glass in our Zoom like this? Are we glass? Are, are we ice? Are we cold? Are, with technology, because our Star Wars are so big in the, uh, the relation with technology. Not that technology has a problem. See how I relate to technology. Because you will see, Ray is in relation with BB-8 like a human being. I see you as a human being. So the way I look at the machine is also creative. It can be creative. But that's interesting, the, 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 the path of Han Solo being trapped in a, a, a block of uh, ice in the city of the cloud. And that's where uh, Luke accepts his own vulnerability. 
because that's the episode two when he discovered that uh, your fa his father was Darth Vader. So hey, it's, it's annoying. And then he 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 he, he loses his hand. So he. he um, so he accepts in, in a kind of way his vulnerability, and then he let him fall, and he fall into the Falcon, Millennium Falcon. And at that time, it was Lando Calrissian uh, who was driving the, 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 the Millennium Falcon, because Lando Calrissian is a nice figure too. He has the both sides. He, he, he was the man who uh, betrayed Han Solo, but also saved and solo at, at, at. so it's a nice figure and and Lando Calrissian will appear in the episode seven eight, eight, episode nine too, but this is very interesting the relation with your vulnerability. Do you accept that life change? Do you accept your vulnerability? Do you accept to be in relation with the unknown? So these are all motifs that are raised into this episode of Star Wars. Are you ready to enter into the Yaros Gamas? What is the Yaros Gamas and the last part of our talk? Or someone want to add something before we're going to the Yaros Gamas? Um, maybe one thing I just wanted to uh, make a note of is that um, at some point, Anakin Skywalker, when he becomes Darth Vader, he too loses his hand. And so Luke's, and like Luke Skywalker does as well in episode five. Now, the difference is in that is that Luke's uh, Anakin Skywalker becoming Darth Vader becomes basically robotic. He has, he puts on this big mask. He, his prosthetic is sort of a, like a strong arm. It's more of an enhancement rather than a prosthetic. Luke Skywalker on the other hand, he basically loses it for a few moments because his replacement is exactly the same as his original hand. So no, but also this is also mirrored to the fact that Luke Skywalker is the bat is the good guy, right? So he has to look human. Well, Darth Vader has to look inhuman because he's embraced the dark side. He's the bad guy. So this it's a nice little distinction that was made of yeah, the use of prosthetics and how they got how they transformed uh, when uh, losing an arm. And, and, and that raised the question of our society. When we became aware of our death, our, we, 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 as a society, we became aware that uh, we are very vulnerable. The COVID-19 virus, being a, we are in contact with our own vulnerability. Are we putting all our power into technology? Or are we put, uh, where we will put your power when you are vulnerable? So that's the question of Star Wars. When you are vulnerable, do you put your, your power into the costume, into the mask, into the technology? Or you put it into the, the, the relation, like, an, uh, like uh, Luke fall into the Falcon Minion, the Millennium Falcon is a very nice symbol of all the Star Wars. He fall into the Falcon Minion, and then he, he is in relation with a team. With a, with a, and so he accept, accepting vulnerability is accept I need the other not use my relation as a virus or as a, a phagocyte, but a, a creative process. So the vulnerability as a way to being a more t a team on Earth and try to raise the level on the Earth level, so the, the planet level. So being in contact with your team and your vulnerability and the need for other. Or you can choose to control. You can choose to control like that, very choose to control, control with technology or with a mask. You control with a mask at that time. The, the mask is very important. And we will retrieve this idea of the mask with Kylo. Kylo is, a fas is fascinated with the mask. He's fascinated with the mask of uh, Darth Vader. But before digging into the Hierogamus or Hierogam couple, Kylo and Rey, just a little word about who is Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren is the son of Princess Leia and Han Solo. And so um, he was also the pupil of Luke Skywalker, but uh, this uh, was not going well between uh, uh, Luke Skywalker and Kylo. So Kylo turned into the, into the dark side. And then he, uh, Kylo met Rey. And I must say that Rey is the little daughter of Palpatine. So Star Wars is all about family, so now do you have the, the family of the Skywalker meeting the family of the Palpatine with Rey. Kylo, Ren, and um, Kylo and Rey. 
So there's two story of line, the, the, the story of the Palpatine and the story of the Skywalker made into that couple. What's interesting about the character of Rey is uh, uh, George Lucas uh, um, put a lot of power into the feminine archetype or the feminine energy. Uh, Princess Leia, is a, she's a very powerful Jedi. She's the only one she, she can uh, dance into the space without, uh, <laughs> because she, at some point she's in, in space without combinaison. Uh, so Princess Leia is very powerful. And Princess Leia was the one who trained uh, Rey before uh, Luke Skywalker. And who was able to fight against Palpatine? Ray. So the energy of Ray is the recon a kind of reconciliation of the feminine energy, but Ray has to enter in relation with his own dark side. And so that will be the episode seven and nine, the emergence of the sacred feminine and the creation of a Yeros Gamos. A Yeros Gamos is a word that uh, means a mariage sacré, a sacred wedding with the opposite. Just some word, what Jung said about the Yeros Gamos. So Jung said that Yeros Gamos, sacred or spiritual marriage, you know, of archetypal figures in the Rubit mystery of antiquity and also in alchemy. So he gave this example, the Christ and the, the church as bri bri bridge room. But this is the, all the energy of the conjunction of the opposite. And so this is the, at the core of the individuation process, how you reconciliate the energy of the opposite in our level of your life. And so that's expressed in the Eros Gammas. It's interesting that Jung talk about the Eros Gammas, the first time Jung talk about the Eros Gammas is in his book uh, published in 1912, a uh, symbol of transformation in libido. Um, I don't know exactly where in the book, but that's the book who, cr who created the division with Freud. Uh, the, 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 the book published in 1912. So that was the first apparition of the word Yeros Gamos. Uh, you see the word uh, Yeros Gamos a lot in, uh, in the correspondence between Jung and Pauli. Jung and Pauli talk about, about this marriage. But let's not to be too, too much um, uh, theoric. Let's look at the emergence of uh, Ray. Uh, so that's at the beginning of the episode nine, and what's interesting about the episode of episode nine of Star Wars, it's you have a kind of a kind of resume of all the forty-two years of the, the the Star Wars movie, just at the beginning of the of the movie. So let's take a look. Okay, let's enter what you, what you have seen in, in this scene. What's raising your conscious when you have seen this? It's the theme of, um, again, the theme of potential coming up again. And once again, it's the, it's the same old story coming back again and again and again. I mean, we... 
we all experience mm-hmm. this at some point in our lives that uh, you know it's um we discover something strong in us yes good um and excuse, excuse me just, just want to verify you too in us or in the space between us well i mean i think at, at the beginning it starts with an awareness of something within us good okay. i think it, it it goes to a next level when you start to realize that that's actually a space between us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know the the movement beyond that, hmm. perhaps is where you get the you know the, the movement into the light rather than the dark, and you begin to include um, the us in this process. But I mean, what we, for me, this scene here, I th- I'm not sure. I can't even remember if I've seen this. I'm sure I've seen this film. It was a long time ago. I can't actually remember. I remember the play between these two um, and the manipulation between these two and that sort of knife edge of, you know, is she going to fall or not? Um, is he going to um, sort of have this have this power or not? To be the, 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 the golden thread running through the whole saga. Mm-hmm. So, so it raised the, the, the question, uh, can I make my, um, can I be in confiance? Uh, can I trust? Can I trust Kylo? <laughs> and uh, so there's an edge of trust that um, uh, present. And uh, but there's also the question that, you know, yeah, that, that, that there's the energy of trust, but there's also the fact that you don't really have much choice about it. Hmm. You know, you, you can't know. Hmm. Hmm. I think All you have to go on is your instinct and your strength. I, I think that, that that's that's because because Ky- Kylo wanted power first. He didn't want love. First. <laughs> he wanted mm-hmm. power. Okay. I, yeah, I think that the the general theme in the whole Star Wars thing is as though um, it presents us with a concept as though there's just this discrete dark and the opposite side. Call it light or whatever you like, but the reality mm-hmm. is that they're entangled, and each has an influence on the other. And that happens at a, yeah. at, a, at, a, at a macroscopic level as well as a microscopic level, and you can see it. Absolutely. And the stars are actually the, the characters that uh, shine and cast shadows at the same time, and they interplay ah. between each other. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Go, go, go. Continue. I love that. Yeah. Entangle- entanglement and our level. I'll, I'll, leave it, I'll leave it there. I mean, I just wanted to put that in as as a as a, uh, a contextual uh, theme. Yeah, it's good. Entanglement. Uh, it's nice because I, I I end my my talk with synchronicity. But maybe synchronicity is the entanglement process, or the entangle the energy of the entanglement, because they are entangled. Uh, Kylo and Ren they are entangled as one. They are like one, but they are two. They are entangled two, two. And I don't know if you have experienced it in your life. I have experienced it in the last year. Being entangled with someone, it can be fearful, but it can be very fascinating. So this the energy of this entanglement, hidden in the energy of the Yeros Gamos, it's very important there. And on our level. Uh, Ray, she was playing with the little sphere. The little sphere is... Uh, a kind of a fractalization of the dead star, the metallic da- dead star. I have this, uh, I wanted to present it, uh, I, I will not present it, but uh, when they dis- destroy the first star, when the dead star, the metallic dead star, destroy the first planet, that was just at the same time that Luke Skywalker was training into the little sphere, with the little sphere. So this idea is of, Playing with different level is very important here. But at that point, you see the entanglement process between a man and a woman. But this process, it's also inside of us. The Yeras Gamas is first inside of us, but in a different kind of level, different level. I just want to, to show you, because they are entangled, at first they are entangled to search for Palpatine. Both are searching for Palpatine, not for the same reason, but both are searching for Palpatine. But let's take a look at the two, the two ways they are searching for Palpatine. Um, Kylo, 
how he, he find Palpatine, he discovered uh, an orienter. Uh, I'll see the picture of that. You see that, that picture? How you say that, James, in English? Uh, it's uh, like a compass or a triangle of compass that lead to uh, Palpatine. It's a triangle. Uh, uh, Kylo discovered the first one on the the, the, you know, the, the, the triangle like this, because Eros Gamos is this and this. So Kylo discovered the first triangle that led to Palpatine on that side, and it was hidden. It was on the planet of um, uh, uh, Anakin Skywalker, Mustafar. So he discovered this. But where Ray discovered the other part of the Orienter, let's just take a look at that. The Death Star, the metallic Death Star. Okay, so there's a meaning. Uh, in French, n'aie pas peur de ce que tu es, don't be afraid of who you are. But it can trick into uh, the, <laughs> the dark side. <laughs> so that's how she discovered the, 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 the gadget or the, the orienteur that will help us uh, going into Palpatine. And then she, f she is obligated to form a team with Kylo to go into uh, to Palpatine. So that's where the opposite force danced together. There was another time where they were dancing together. That scene from the episode eight. This is one of the most beautiful. I, I love episode eight. Me, people don't love it, but I, this dance, it's so nice in episode eight. So they are confronting and then they are shifting the energy. And so they are form a, a, a one so they are they, they was fighting for the same and so that time is very important and the last but not the last but the final chapter is when uh, kylo and ray, and ray has to encounter uh, palpatine they create a triangle with palpatine and um, so i have it is a french quote it's mean uh, love as a sword and humor as a shield so it's a french uh, expression but now they are together they are together because they have integrated inside of Ray integrated his dark side and Kylo integrated his light side. And so they are dancing with Palpatine. And so that was how they, they were able to fight to, 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 to win against Palpatine. Kylo um, died. I don't know if you didn't see the movie, sorry for the, the punch. Kylo died, but you know, he died in a kind of way, uh, like in Star Wars, dying uh, at some point, it can be interpreted in a lot of ways. If you look at it as a dream, you can see that is integration of, of the energy of Kylo. But there's an integration uh, in the Force, and I don't have the image of the last sequence, but you see Rey with BB-8. So Rey and BB-8, in, in, they are in relation. 
So that's the BB-8 is a child, uh, an electronic child, child, but it's uh, they are in relation between uh, both. So, uh, and also at the end, you see the golden sword. Uh, usually, the the blue sword are for the Jedi, and the red sword are for the the Sith. But then um, um, Ray uh, created a sword, a gold sword, and uh, that that symbol is very important. I didn't have occasion to talk about the sword, but the sword uh, is very uh, it's a very symbol, very interesting. It's a it's an amplification of the motif of the sword of the the uh, the, 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 the knight, but. Uh, uh, now at the end, she integrate uh, the energy, and that symbol is with with the sword, with the golden sword. I'm sorry, I have so much to say. Uh, <laughs> like in my talk and synchronicity, I was too much to say. So I want too much to shoot you information, but I, I want to enter uh, for the last. We have maybe six or six minutes. I want to enter into what for you in your own life, translating archetype in your own life, what. In your life, what is what is the reconciliation reconciliation of the opposite in your li own life? How you do that, and how important is it in your life to reconcile it, the opposite? I'll term, term it with this question. Well, if I may, I mean, uh, just a word about that. <clears throat> I mean, for me. Uh, uh, there's, it's been my life journey has been very much about um, light and dark. I would say um, experience of light um, and uh, sort of a sense of uh, of darkness, um, sort of interchanging at all times. And um, I think, especially in you know, in today uh, with everything that's happened in the past year. Um, everything that has been experienced by so many people, not only with, with the virus, but online, um, online debates about all kinds of ideas and theories. And, but the, the sheer sort of, um, how can I say, um, trivialization of humanity that social media has brought about in the context of all these discussions. Mm. Um, I have seen a lot, I, I feel, I, I have felt a lot in the presence of darkness in that sense, um, in the way people have been led to communicate their ideas to each other hmm. um and um and i think this uh, sort of i don't know emerging tendency to radicalize everything hmm. uh to um paint um a picture black and white and choose the white pick for yourself oh yeah you know this kind of by default you know this is black this is white i'm here oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> right um and i think that is an extremely dangerous disintegration of humanity. Hmm. Um, and I think the beautiful thing about uh, Jung, the, you know, one of the big um, sort of powerful pulls of Jung for me is that he's a person who's capable of talking about embracing both sides of the coin, both sides of the story, okay. um, and making them a part. Okay, it's a dangerous, uh, it's a dangerous, I mean, you know, Faust was one of his big um you know myths right the the whole faustian saga was one of his uh, great um, myths from childhood um and it's a dangerous path uh, but that's what makes us grow that's what makes us be human and uh, this sort of um i don't know uncritical unreflecting rejection of anything that we think is bad <laughs> Uh, which seems to have become, you know, the sort of uh, the default today. And, and this is, I think this is where, it, where the um, integration of uh, the, the two sides um, is happening, certainly for me. Um, and, you know, I think it's also very much a collective movement as well. Hmm. Thank you very much. I think just following up, uh, yeah, yeah. Robert, I think just following up on what you said, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think the element that plays here is is that, is the is struggle and struggle is the is the critical human condition that um, uh, I guess makes us change. That, that is the element of change. Is how we grow. Without experiencing struggle, we're nothing. And that I think the dark side, if you like, is really a static uh, state where there is no struggle. It's sameness, mm. no change whatsoever. Mm. 
And do, do you believe that white and black are more radicalized because they are becoming absolute and not relational proprieties? I think they're relational. They're relational yeah, properties. But do, you, do, you do, you, do, you, do you observe it in the world that they are relational or they are absolute and they are no, radicalization? No. When you lose mediation, then... Yeah, Gary, right? go, Gary. When you lose the in-between, the middle, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You lose balance and you go into binary mode, Good. Yeah, right? Yeah. And it's either A or it's B, but it can't mm. be C. Ah, uh, yeah. and, and that's related you know, to our language. Hey, Gary, we talk about the language. Do I have in my language the possibility to have A or B? Uh, like the well, native if, people, the native if, people have this gate. Yeah, go ahead. If, uh, if you have a look at our digital world, we, in the digital society, there's only noughts and ones. But when yeah. you look in the quantum world, there's yeah. superposition. So there is no naught, just naught or one. It's actually naught and one. And you have a multitude of states. And the observer and, that, and the that, observed cannot be separated. Absolutely. They cannot be taken apart. Absolutely. So it's absolutely relational? Yes. Yes. It's absolutely relational or it's relational absolutely? <laughs> It's, 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 it's relational. That's, that's the trick of Yoda. That's the trick of Yoda. It, it's, a, it's a relational core with a physical shell. Oh, thank you. Right? Yeah. I love, I love yeah. this image. I love this image. I love the pearls. <laughs> the pearls I <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> wow. Thank you for being here. Uh, sorry, I have too much to say sometime, and uh, but thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Still one hour and a half, and uh, so uh, I'm I'm very touched that you are still here, <laughs> trying to follow me. <laughs> thank you. I remember our conversation, Ari, uh, in Paris. We had so much fun in Paris, Ari. <laughs> yeah. And that, that that's me, the energy of Paris. Hey, Mona, you see, you, I remember yeah. Mona too oh. in Paris. <laughs> I remember the poetic, uh, the poetic uh, aspect of Mona too. So it's nice to be in contact with you again. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. And I hope we'll be doing that in Paris soon. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you're right, John Fanta. It is really great that we can, we're able to connect to everyone from yeah. work. Yeah, and it's yeah, pretty yeah. great and yes hopefully we can do something uh in pari very soon which would be really fantastic mm -hmm. um i guess we have just gone over the time unfortunately uh jean francois this has been a fantastic oh, session i mean it I, I was expecting a presentation but this has been a sort of a group session and i loved the level of interaction i loved how everyone were almost at least almost everyone had the opportunity to speak so i'd just like to thank you so much for this it's been a fantastic thank session thank you um is there anything that you'd just like to say any final remarks before we all go not me i uh, you know it's an, it's a, it's a beginning of something so yeah <laughs> Great. Well, great. Well, thank you so much again, uh, John Francois, and you. thank you everyone who has contributed to this session. It's been every one of you have made this session really special. So thank you all. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, James. Thank you, James, for your animation. You animate this space in a Jedi, very Jedi way <laughs> or a very creative way. I enjoy a lot how you animate uh, this event. Thank you, James. Great. Well, thank yeah. you, John, for the kind word. Um, now, before we all go, um, actually, John, can I can ask you just to take off the uh, screen share. Yeah. Not oh, great. Thank you. Yes, before we all go, I'd just like to give you all a few announcements, a few updates of the events that the Paris Centre will be running in the next couple of months. Um, so first of all, I am pleased to announce that we will be hosting this new one-off event entitled The Practice of the I Ching uh, with uh, Shantina Augusta Sabadini and Cruz, Cruz Mania Sabadini. Um, in this webinar, we will explore the practice of consultation in detail, answering as far as possible all the questions concerning this mysterious uh, activity, the I Ching Oracle, 
uh, from the appropriate formulation of the question to the specific function of the various sections of the hexagram, uh, which is the answer of the I Ching. Uh, the webinar is addressed to both the newcomers uh, or the uh, old I Ching hands. Uh, the main reference for this event will be the Eranos I Ching. So it's the translation by Rudolf Ritzema and Shantina Sabadini. But you're welcome to keep at hand your favorite I Ching book to compare the passages. As uh, Shantina said, often the Chinese and Ye Ching allows for multiple meanings. So uh, if you'd like to participate on this event, uh, it, there's all of the information is on the website and the event will run on the 27th of March. So save the date for that. Um, secondly, I'd also like to invite you to our immersive two-day course entitled The Great Rethink uh, with Colin Tudge, um, which will be running in collaboration with the Scientific and Medical Network. Uh, inspired by his latest book, Colin, in his uh, four-part series, will explore different ways that the world can change and maybe should change, ranging from ecology, economics, sociology, and politics. Ways to change change the world in a sustainable way. At each part, we'll have guest speakers, uh, special guests that will dialogue with Colin, such as Andrew Fellows, uh, Denise Walton, Ian Rappel, and Ruby Reed. Um, this event will run on two dates, uh, and we'll have two sessions per day. Uh, so it will be on the 17th and the 24th of April. And finally, um, our, I'd just like to invite you all for our next session of the Flickering Reality, Exploring Ideas in Film and Television session. Uh, we have the honor of having Kevin Liu, who's a senior, senior lecturer and director of the MA Youngian and Post Youngian Studies at the University of Essex. And he will give his presentation entitled Persona, Masks That Conceal, Masks That Reveal. Kevin, by looking at films such as Wall Street, The Mask, and The Farewell, will analyze by hi highlighting the potentially pathological relationship one can have with one's persona, and study the important role played by this archetypal imperative in personality development. Uh, this event will be, it's a monthly event, uh, this Flickin' Reality is a monthly event, and the next one, Kevin's, will run on the 9th of April, and again, it's a free event, so I hope to see you again all then. And uh, just finally, I'd like to invite you all to support the Pari Centre by becoming a friend of the Pari Centre, which is our uh, membership subscription. By becoming a friend, you will receive a 10% discount on all of our events, live and online, a free subscription to our quarterly journal, The Party Perspective, and access to our members areas and Friends of the Party Center Circle on Sutra, our online forum. To become a friend, you can just visit our website for more information. And finally, as always, uh, to contact us, you can visit our website where we've got the contact us section, or you can just send us a message on Facebook or visit our YouTube page or you can just send us an email directly at uh, james at parisinter.com to contact me or Eleanor at parisinter.com to contact Eleanor. Uh, thank you again, everyone. Thank you again, Jean-Francois, and we'll see you again soon here see at the Paris Center. Bye-bye. Yeah, may the force made a pause yeah. with us. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, Jean-Francois. Thank, Jean thank you. Bye. Bye.